So, back in September, yeah, like almost two months ago, I saw the Fathom event for Digimon Adventure Tri Reunion, the American release. And man, was that a blast of nostalgia. For me, Bona Marshall stole the show. Her rendition of Izzy is just so... Ooh, it just had me so giddy. It just reminded me of being back as a kid every Saturday morning watching Digimon. Ty's voice actor returned as well. I mean, it's Ty. And that's not to say that some of the other returning cast weren't good, but it's just something about Izzy's techno babble that just makes the show. Although, I have to talk about Matt's voice replacement. And you can tell. You can tell who some of the returning actors are right away. Some of the replacement voice actors do a pretty good job of mimicking a lot of the original voice cast voice, but, ah, oh man. Vic Mignogama, ah, it's not that you don't sound good, but oh my god, the inflections in Matt's voice are so emo. I mean, they they are so painful to listen to, you just want to punch Matt right in the face. Versus the Japanese rendition where Matt sounds really angry with Tai's inactions, but that seems more like it's his character rather than some angsty teen. And at the same time, Ty and Matt in the American version don't have that same chemistry as they do in the Japanese version. And I'm not just talking about the slash fiction implications. It just sounds like they're so naggy with each other and not in that we've known each other for years kind of way. So in, in that light, honestly, the adaptation kind of fails. There's also this bizarre musical choice that I noticed. It seems that some of the background music was replaced with some of the more recognizable tracks from the American version, but then in some places it seems like they kept the Japanese soundtrack the same, most notably in the fight scenes, which honestly, that's I think that's a good thing. I definitely prefer the Japanese soundtrack Braveheart over the American counterpart. Hey Digimon, hey Digimon, monster friends to the boys and girls. Hey Digimon, hey Digimon, champions of the digital world. Hey Digimon, hey Digimon, ultimate friends to the boys and girls. Hey Digimon, hey Digimon, champions of the digital world. Yeah, I don't think that would have fit. And of course there was that opener that I kind of made fun of in my last video. And honestly, it's not that bad. For the way Millennials' taste in music has been shifting, we could have had something far, far worse like dubstep or something. Or something a lot more 90s. Alright, let's go. I'm ready. Ready? Let's go. The Dushi Pollution is up and running Did you see? Did you hear? Did you know it was coming? My Digi Destiny starts today Let me hear you say Yeah, that movie was just a mess all around. So, my final thoughts. Did this adaptation really need a theatrical release? A Fathom event works. However, I believe this movie was released in theaters for a limited run, and in that, I don't think so. Sure, this movie can capitalize on some nostalgia, but I really don't think a bunch of people remember Digimon, and they definitely don't hold it to heart as much as Pokemon do. Sure, there are some of those extremes that... Oh boy. At the very end of the, of the movie, they had a... They definitely showed some of those hardcore fans. Yeah, those are the fans that write the Matt and Ty slash fiction. Would I recommend this version over the Japanese version? Only if you don't like subtitles and you prefer watching your anime in English. And if you grew up with the original Digimon series, it will hit that sweet spot of nostalgia. But otherwise, for my money, I'll stick to the Japanese version.